to Positive Nerd Podcast, the podcast that takes subjects that divide fandoms and aims to unite them through their hatred and their dislikes and all that guff. So we are here today. This is the Positive Health, a uh, Positive Mental Health uh, podcast for nerds. We are here today, as always, with me, your host, We Claire, and our lovely, lovely co-host, Liz. Yay! Hi, Liz. Yay! Hi! Hi! <laughs> Yay! Sorry. Now, apologies for any technical problems we are having because we are doing this via Skype and sometimes the sound cuts out. So if we uh, if we have any more problems, I will cut and we'll start again. So, tonight on Positive Nerd Podcast, here we go. We are going to be talking about the new bat suit. Is the new bat suit crap now i couldn't think of a better, t- better title for that <laughs> so i was just like well to put it bluntly yes or no so the next thing we've got coming up is liz's comic corner yes we are going to be looking at nebula number one for liz's comic corner uh we put that to a vote last week and everyone chose nebula and i can say it was very very good indeed and finally which batman is best yes we are going to finally solve the debate which Batman is best? And we're going to be talking about TV and movie Batman. I'm not going to be particularly talking about any animated series stuff, but we're going to be talking about the other Batman. And you can see a little picture of them there if you're watching live. So, Liz, let's start off with Is the New Bat Suit Crap? We're going to start with some tweets, Liz, and I want to get your your vibe on what you think of these tweets okay because we had uh, the new bat suit was revealed this week robert pattinson as we know is the new batman and the whole of the internet went friggin mental there were 50 percent of people that were into it and 50 percent of people that were like release the snyder cut um as usual <laughs> so you know that's the, that's the usual vibe so here we go Right, tweet number one. This is, without a doubt, the most personal bat suit we've ever seen, and we haven't seen the full bat suit. Hashtag the Batman, and that's from Batman Files. Now we don't ask for these tweets; we just find them online. What do you think about that? What do you mean? What does he mean by the most personal bat suit? I think he is referring to the bat symbol and uh, the gun pieces right. on the bat suit got you okay so for those who don't know we're going to be showing those pictures later but we're talking about the gun that you can see emblazoned on the chest and we'll show that later the next tweet we've got is what a downgrade this batman is going to be batfleck would destroy him in like 15 seconds suit looks trash this is batman and then he has a picture of four kind of really um sort of rugged shots of batfleck um so was there a lot of chat about Batfleck online this week, Liz? There was. There was. It, it trended a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's definitely a lot of people who are still mad about Batfleck. Oh, God. Well, I'm going to say this. Get over yourselves. Okay, next, we've got uh, someone here that replied to me on Twitter, uh, James Green, who's a longtime follower of mine. I don't know if he listens to the podcasts, but he's on my, twi- uh, my Twitter. Bat fans are moaning about the about his casting, like they did Affleck, Bale, Clooney, Kilmer, and Keaton, so at least they're consistent. Was there a lot of moaning with each of those every time? Why is this so precious to people? Um, well, you know, I, like, obviously, I, you know, the, the internet wasn't around when Keaton was cast or anything like that, but, uh, but I think people always are going to have opinions about who's playing Batman, um, you know, everybody's got their own idea in their head of who it's supposed to be, and, you know, who their fan casting would be, and, you know, so some people are going to be upset, you know, and some people are not, uh, and, you know, I think you just have to kind of wait and see, really, before you kind of cast aspersions okay so i thought that's wise words from liz the next that's the last tweet we've got here from the moonlight warrior this suit looks like the perfect batman year two suit not quite a prototype but slowly morphing into the bat suit we all know love it what does this person mean by the year two suit uh so uh basically we've been uh i, I think matt reeves has said actually that it's going to be set during his second year as Batman um so like he's a like relatively you know he's relatively early in his career 
as Batman. And, you know, uh, this seems like it would be a good, you know, iteration of an early bat suit, like, you know, to uh, at least in, you know, in this fan's opinion, uh, you know, and maybe that has to do with the slightly unfinished look of the cowl. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, so yes, it's it's him still maybe fi- figuring out the suit uh, is, is what they're saying, I think. Okay, got you, got you, okay, because I wasn't quite sure. And, oh, this is the last one, sorry. I thought the last one was the last one. They've got a very positive one because this is Positive Nerd. Uh, so this is from Sean Finnegan. The bat suit design for the Batman is dope. Looks way more utilitarian, rough and armor-like than the sleeker designs of prior films. The cowl is interesting and reminds me a lot of the Netflix Daredevil design, but I need to see the horns. So there was a lot, I can see what they're saying about Daredevil. You explain to us, Liz, for those who haven't seen it, of course you've seen it, but for those who haven't, what did they mean by this uh, connection between Batman and Daredevil? Well, I think a lot of people uh, were of the opinion, like, right away, like, you know, loads of people kind of piled on to say, like, this really looks like a Daredevil suit, not a Batman suit. Um, I think that has to do with the cowl. You haven't really gotten a great look at the cowl yet. And it looks like maybe, you know, are there even, like, little bad ears? You can't really tell. Um, It does look a lot like the Netflix Daredevil cowl. Uh, but I think a lot of that really had to do with the lighting in the video. Like they chose uh, like a red lighting for the screen test video. And mm-hmm. uh, I think that actually just, you know, I, pro- pro- they, I don't know if anybody would have said that if that red light hadn't been there because it just does actually kind of make it look like the Daredevil costume to have the red light on the black suit. I think I'm, a, I'm in agreement with you. I think the it's I've got a picture up now for those who are watching along live of a still from uh, what was released this week and it's the hue, it's got a real red hue to it. I don't mind the cowl and I don't mind his big chin jutting out. Like, I don't mind all of that. Like, I thought the suit looked quite good. Well, okay, so Liz, we've read out the tweets, but what what are your thoughts on the bat suit? Do you think it's crap? Do you actually think it's crap? Um, I do not think it's crap. Um, I think, uh, you know, you don't really get, you know, you, you only really get a, a look at the the chest. You get a look at the logo, you know, the uh, the, the bat symbol. Um, but you don't get a great look at the cowl. You get like, you know, just kind of a sort of a profile view of the cowl without um, without really being able to see like the, the bat ears or anything. Um, I don't think it looks bad. I think it actually, I kind of like the look of the cowl, even if they choose to keep it exactly like this. Um, it it kind of really is re- very reminiscent of like kind of almost the golden age, like, you know, really old school bat cowl. Um, yeah. Uh, the, and the, like, the suit looks pretty good from what I can see of it. You can't see that much. Um, I have issues with the bat symbol, but. Oh, what, what are your issues about the bat symbol? What are your issues? Oh. Why? Uh, I don't know about the gun pieces. I don't know about the gun pieces. Like, I, you know, I kind of cringed when I saw the gun pieces. Oh, you cringed. Right. Why did... A lot. I cringed a lot. That's quite a, Uh, that's quite a, 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 I don't know, quite a reaction. Why did you cringe? Because I saw the gun pieces and I was like, okay, they're gun pieces. I didn't think too much about it. What about you? Okay. Well, you know, just in case anybody didn't know... Bruce Wayne's parents got shot. Um, <laughs> oh my god, that old story again. Lifelong crusade. <laughs> like, yeah, breaking news, Bruce Wayne's parents were shot. Um, <laughs> Batman has a lifelong crusade against gun users, essentially. Like, Batman would never use a gun. Um, and, you know, that's that's something I would tell the Affleck people as well. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It seems almost like... Like, I'm sure they're using it as, like, this is a reminder of his parents being shot. But I just don't think Batman would go there, personally. Like, I don't think anything that would even remotely glorify a gun would be part of his uniform. Um, I think he's, like, mm. you know, I just, that's that's my feeling about it. Other people, you know, might feel really differently. But, like, the thing so. the thing is, right, and people frigging love Batflick, or, or there's a contingency of people that love Batflick, but the, the, I, we could surely make the argument to those people that 
okay, we, we love you, we know that you love Batflight, but he is super violent and, like, he's, like, killing people left, right and centre when we see him. Surely that's not Batman yeah, either. Yeah. No, no, like, to me, yeah, so so I have, that's that's one of my issues with, um, with not, you know, Ben Affleck as Batman, but, like, the way they portrayed his character in those movies, like, um, the fact that he does actually use guns in the movies, like, yes, there's, like, a, you know, there's a historical context for it in like you know the like late 30s early 40s like there were a couple of times where you see batman use a gun so yes you can say contextually oh but he did uh but like you know modern day batman and like you know i would say for you know 99.9 percent .9 of the time we've had a batman who would like not even touch a gun so so uh so that's my feelings about that but you mm. know i think if they if they, you know, if they explain it correctly uh, in the film, then I could be maybe brought on board. Uh, and I, I still don't mind, you know, I don't mind it so much that I hate the costume. It's just like it is a quibble for me. Okay, okay. A, quib a quibble's fine. A quibble's fine. <laughs> now, it's not, I've got, you know, now look at a picture if you're watching live of Robert Pattinson all sparkly glowy as the vampire, you know, in Twilight or whatever he's, what's his name? Edward Twain or something. I don't know what his, whatever his name is. What's his freaking name? Uh, Edward Cullen. Oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> I, know. I don't know. Like I watched Twilight like a million years ago and I was like, what am I watching? Um, now I actually saw, when I saw the Batsuit reveal, I thought, yeah, fair play to you. I think like people have gone still they're still mentioning i was reading some other tweets online oh it's just a bad casting it's a bad casting choice somebody was tweeting me saying i hope that he's not twinkly and it's like and i kind of replied back in a jokey way and i went i really want him to be sparkly and i want the bat nipples i want all of it and the person was really like yeah. no don't say it and it's like do you honestly think they're gonna put bat nipples on him and make him sparkly well people are so um <laughs> funny about this casting he's in his 30s now he's not a boy anymore like why why can't they let this go liz why can't they let it go why I don't know. I mean, I mean, you know, like when somebody's been typecast a little bit, especially if they were like a teen heartthrob, like you know, I guess they have to kind of like really work hard to escape that and be taken seriously as an actor. And he's a very good actor, like he is. And and it's been many years since he, you know, he played a sparkly vampire. Um, and I, you know, I'm I'm into it. Like you know, it, I thought it was kind of like oh, you know, when they when they announced the casting, I was like I was like ha. Huh okay interesting mm -hmm. but you know i'm into it because i do think he's very good um so you know and and obviously like a lot of people you know would have tarred heath ledger with the same brush like you know when he got cast as the joker the same exact thing happened like you know oh he's like a teen heartthrob he's in 10 things i hate about you like you know why are you casting this guy like uh and he did an incredible job so exactly you know, you have to just wait and see I mean, this is a thing, like, they are actors, right? They are actors, guys. So they are cast because they can play many different roles. And that's, like, that's what we remember. And he's not, again, he's not a bad actor. I would have been more worried if they've cast, like, I don't know, Adam Sandler in the role or, the role or something. Because I'd be like, right, that's a bad choice. That's a bad choice, okay? But Robert Pattinson, fine, okay? Even if they'd cast, like, Zac Efron, I would have been like, what? But Robert Pattinson fine right and when we see like if we're talking about chins he looks like he's got a good old chin to be batman that looks like a good chin yeah like i'm not a bad chin at all it's not a bad chin not a bad mm -hmm. chin we all know you're into arms though uh so you know this isn't like you know the chin's not going to be doing it for you at all yeah yet so i can't cast an opinion on that yet yeah <laughs> unless I'll, he's got um, a metal you know, arm <laughs> share my thoughts and um, we've also got i've got a picture here of like Clooney and and alicia silverstone and chris o'donnell now when people moan about the bat suit and about bad casting you know i go back and i think to Clooney because well, if we look at this picture that's on screen here you can see i'll just describe it for those who aren't watching along it's like this sort of sort of navy blue black you know and the silver the giant bat symbol emblazoned across the chest um alicia silverstone's boobs are very apparent <laughs> and there's like a there's a whole silver cod piece vibe going on as well i mean do people forget you know i don't know what what do you think why are people just you know why can't they put it into context liz yeah i know like 
like they could be stuck with this like you know like it, it's good times you know they're they're taking it very seriously these days like you know i think uh i think the fact that you know um like you know you, you can look at that and very clearly see what you don't want um and uh, you know i think uh i think now you're gonna get uh, suits that continue to evolve to like you know sort of better and better versions like i actually thought like you know i thought affleck suit was awesome i really loved it but you know i think once we see the you know full patents in suit it might be even better yes absolutely absolutely i've got uh the bat nips on screen now no one is i mean as long as they are not bat nips and yeah liz is now sitting up very straight for a reason now you guys i want screenshots of this I want actual screenshots <laughs> of this. You're looking really, really good with those bat nips. Is it cold? Is it cold? Uh, thank you. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh my god, I'm loving yeah. that. <laughs> it's so amazing for obviously for those who aren't watching, uh well, just watch on YouTube. Just watch on YouTube after subscribe and watch on YouTube. So that I guess concludes the bat suit chat. And I'm gonna say this, Liz, and then I'll let you conclude as well. I am intrigued by this bat suit. I don't care and I'm quite happy for there to be lots of different reiterations or iterations of Batman. Um, the, the bad ones I will ignore and the good ones I will watch and I will enjoy. And, and that is it. And I think when directors release this first sort of footage, those first things, we have to be very careful about judging that because that's not the final product. What do you think, Liz? What are your final thoughts? You know, okay, here's the thing. I actually think that it is totally normal and fine for people to, like, get all hot and sweaty about the bat suit. Um, anytime there's a new bat suit in the comics, people get all worked up about it. People pick it apart. Like, do I like this? Do, what do I like? What don't I like? You know, they do it to Superman's costume. They do it to Wonder Woman's costume. Um, you know, everybody, like, you know, people... Uh, have strong opinions about it because they love the characters and because the cost costumes are so iconic and they're such a big part of, you know, the character in a way. So I think it's like, it's really cool for people to have, you know, strong opinions in that department. Um, but, you know, it's like, because everybody has a different opinion, like, you know, what somebody else thinks looks really great and really cool might not be, you know, how you feel about it. Uh, so, you know, it is just a matter of opinion at the end of the day to, you know, to an extent. Um, so if you liked Ben Affleck's costume better, that's fair enough. Um, but, you know, we haven't really seen the full thing yet. So, you know, maybe hold on and wait and see it in action. Yeah. That's exactly what I think. And while you were doing that very, very serious chat, I got you up with the bat nips again. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, oh, cool. <laughs> it's like, yes, yeah, very, very serious bat chat. Very serious bat chat. But we only take, we only take Liz seriously now, guys. We only take Liz seriously mm -hmm. when she's got her bat nips out. Only when she's got her bat nips out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So powerful shoulders, you know. <laughs> powerful shoulders, beautiful pecs, and really pointy nips. Um, <laughs> Right, let's move on. Let's get over to Liz's Comic Corner. If I can find the thing, it's Liz's Comic Corner. Yes, we, yay, it's Liz's Comic Corner. We are going to be discussing Nebula number one. Now, we put this out to um, everybody on, who follows Nerd Jabber because the, the, the podcast is hosted by Nerd Jabber, and it's just Nerd Jabber on Twitter and stuff. Um, and the votes came back, and it looked like Nebula was the clear winner pretty much from the start. Um, I was quite happy to read this. Tell us a little bit about Nebula. Have we seen her in the comics before, Liz? Uh, we have seen, yeah, Nebula's been around since uh, 1985. Mm -hmm. um, she first appeared in uh, The Avengers uh, number 257 uh, by Roger Stern and John Buscema and she uh, she has kind of risen to popularity as a character in a really big way since she first appeared in the Guardians of the Galaxy films uh, played by Karen Gillan. Uh, so, she, you know, that's actually like where most people became familiar with that character, I think, because even though she's played like, you know, she she played a big role in the Infinity Gauntlet like storyline that she has a really big role in that. Like if you haven't read that, there's, you know, there's some big stuff with Nebula. Uh, but, you know, but she was kind of like a, you know, sort of maybe C-list villain uh for most of her tenure 
uh, okay. until until the movies, I think. And so has she had her own comic before? Has she ever headed up her own story? Is this the first time? This is the first time ah. that I'm aware of. Okay, all right. If anyone, if anybody wants to correct us, you can always tweet us. We're always up for being fact checked here, um, which is absolutely fine. But I really, I'm really glad. I mean, I love the the cover. Um, I think it's amazing. I'm really glad that this got chosen actually. So t tell us a little bit, without any spoilers, tell us a little bit about the story. Now, I, I read this last night and I really loved it. Tell us what happens and where, where we're at with Nebula. Uh, okay, so Nebula, like, you know, she, you know, basically, Nebula's a space pirate, uh, you know, if you want to kind of break it down. Uh, and that's kind of what she does. Uh, and she, uh, she, we, we meet her, um, she's on this space station, and she's taking hostage this young girl, because she's after a piece of technology that is being developed by her scientist father. Um, and Nebula wants this device. Um, because uh, she believes that it helps you see into the future. She, you know, she believes it to be like a, you know, sort of future-telling device, which isn't actually what it is. Um, but that's what she's after, and she's quite ruthless, and she's quite, you know, like, uh, you know, quite willing to like take out this, you know, little girl. And uh, but then she gets kind of interrupted in the middle of her mission, and you know something happens by the end she has to flee and uh i don't want to give too much away but you know i think this story is going to be a lot about nebula and her problems with her you know sort of identity and you know knowing who she is mm -hmm. and i i mean i really liked it because it the the thing about this is i didn't know what to expect okay i only know nebula from gardens of the galaxy and the marvel films um, and I think Karen Gillan does a really, really good job. So I went into this thinking, well, she'll be a bit of a badass, but how much of, of a badass is she going to actually be? And we pretty much get into it, and I'm like, oh, you're a bit of an arsehole. <laughs> and, I, and that's what she should be. Not in, a, not in, a, in the way that I think Emma Frost is an arsehole. That's completely different. But I, li I like a sorry, sorry, Liz, like Emma Frost diss alert. Um, I, I like the way this gets straight into story. She is ruthless. She doesn't care that this this uh, scientist, old guy scientist, there's a little girl. She doesn't care. She's willing to do what it takes to get the things that she wants. Um, and I found that quite interesting. And I, I, I think I'm going to continue reading this because I want to see what Nebula is like on her own without a cast of su supporting characters, if you know what I mean. Because I yeah. think that always changes things. And what did you think about? How do you think that compares slightly for those who want to perhaps read Nebula for what from what we see in the film? Because what we see in the film is slightly different, I think. I think what we see here is much more like a Guardians One uh, level Nebula. Like you know, before she's kind of because by the time you you uh, spend time with her in Avengers Endgame, you know she's had a lot of self discovery and she's like she's actually come to terms with a lot of things, but here she's very raw, she's still very bitter, um, she's got a big chip on her shoulder, uh, she, you know, this this is like, you know, this is like Guardians 1 Nebula, who is just like, you know, uh, full of anger, um, you know, and, uh, and especially her issues with Thanos mm -hmm. and Gamora, which, you know, that isn't mentioned in this issue, but it's all underlying. I think, you know, a lot of her anger issues and, and identity issues stem from uh, wanting Thanos' approval and Gamora being the favorite daughter. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, you know, kind of implicit. You can kind of feel that from the writing. I think they're probably taking it in some interesting directions because they can't, obviously, it's the first issue so th there's not really that much apart from setting up the story but I feel if we keep reading it it'll get to a point where you're like oh she'll start to unravel a little bit do you know what I mean yeah and it ends on a really interesting note mm -hmm. that I think will play out thematically in a really interesting way yes uh, through the book oh absolutely and it's only five issues it's only a five issue mini series so it's not going to actually like you know be some great you know uh investment of your time I really like the character of Nebula in the film as well because I do think she's one of those. It's you know the morally grey characters when you've talked about Loki in the past. Yeah. Um, I think she's equally okay. Not not as big a character as Loki. She's not got the charisma of Loki. She's a completely different vibe. But I think there's something about Nebula that's very intriguing because she alludes to the fact 
that she's had this kind of like hard life and this terrible upbringing um because thanos is a horrible horrible character really when you read the comics you see much more of what thanos has done and what he is you don't really i don't think you get a sense of that in the films do you do you think the same liz I think you get a sense of it in the films, but I think it's definitely, you know, like, she's she's definitely, if you read Infinity Gauntlet, for example, like, you know, it's like, it is brutal um, what she goes through. So, uh, yeah, I think Nebula's had a really tough time. And, like, you know, I think that comes across for sure in the mm -hmm. movies. Like, I think they actually did a great job of, like, you know, sort of summing her up as a character in the movies and making you empathize with her, even though she is, you know, she definitely starts off as, like, a, a villain i think she turns into more of an anti-hero later on yeah uh, yeah i think i love those kinds of characters too if we we've we're ha we've got a black widow film coming out this year which i think is a long time coming um if we were to have like a sort of you know we've had and we've got had a venom movie so if we talk about villains and things and Bl black widow's not a villain but venom is i guess in a way again he's a bit he's sort of in between sometimes so he's a bit morally gray as well which i quite like those kind of characters but if you were, if they were going to make a Nebula film, just a Nebula film, do you think there would be enough material in there to make a Nebula film? Uh, yeah, I do. I do. I absolutely do. Like, you know, I mean, she's been around for like, for, you know, quite a long time, like 1985. So that's what, uh, like, you know, 35 plus years. Mm -hmm. And yeah, for sure. There's like, there's definitely many interesting stories you could tell, like, you know, if you based it in the source material or if you just kind of like, you know looked at the character and you know decided to you know kind of just put her off in in a direction like this story seems to be doing i kind of i'm surprised that i know where disney plus is going with all of the stuff they're doing but i think it, it would have been quite interesting to see a sort of nebula maybe just a one-shot thing like just one series to i to, i think to give more context to the harshness of her upbringing and that the bond between her and Gamora and how that's quite complicated as well. But um, when I say you don't even get a glimpse of what Thanos is capable of, it's really true because in the comics you're like, there's some times where I've been reading like stories with Thanos um, and I'm just like, wow. Like, and they say that Marvel can't be dark. And you're like, no, there's, there's darkness there. You just have to find it. Uh, but overall, I mean, I really enjoyed it. Like, I loved it, Liz. Are you going to continue reading this? Yeah, really good issue. I really liked it too. Like, uh, and um, yeah, really well written. Great art. Like, um, Vita, Ayala, Vita Ayala is the writer, and Claire Rowe is the artist. And yeah. I think they both did a really fantastic job. Yeah, really, really great job. Really great job. Um, we're going to be choosing a comic at the you know after this podcast. Uh, Liz will give you some options. So if you keep listening at the end of the podcast, Liz will give the options, and we're going to do another poll. Uh, unless so Liz and I were talking about this and Liz was like unless there's something I really want to talk about we'll just pan it to a poll so really it's up to Liz Liz is like the comic queen so this week she has decided to, to do a poll and you've got three interesting ones right don't reveal them just yet yeah are they all Marvel yeah. and DC or uh, they're actually believe it or not this week they're all DC uh, ah. which is unusual but uh, yeah, those were the ones that really stuck out. So interesting. Okay, well, I don't read enough DC, so I'm excited. So whatever you guys end up choosing, and what we're gonna do is Liz will put this out after the podcast is done. It'll be on Nerd Jabber as a poll, and you guys can vote. And um, so that was Liz's comic corner. Yay! Another another comic corner complete. Six no five Excellent. comic corners. Brilliant. Um, now we're gonna talk about something very important. It's like it's a definite. We're coming back to Batman. We took a break there. But we're going to be talking about, oh, wait a minute, I've got the buttons all mixed up. Let's turn that off. Um, we're going to be talking about which Batman is best. Oh, Liz. I mean, honestly. <laughs> this is possibly the most important chat we have ever had on this podcast. Which Batman is best? <sighs> now, Liz, I tell you. Um, I chose this because it's a, it's, a, it's a bugbear of mine, first of all, that so many people get annoyed about castings of characters. Because guess what, guys? It's just a fictional world, right? So that's the number one. I know everything means something to everyone, but still. I'm going to read out some tweets. Here's the first tweet. Christian Bale and Christopher Nolan's version of Batman will always be the best. Hashtag 
Batman. And we've got the nice picture here of uh, Christopher Nolan directing Tom Hardy and uh, Christian Bale. Um, really liked that Batman. I liked that iteration of Batman. What do you think? I mean, you're a big fan of the Nolan stuff, right? Uh, yeah, and you know what? Uh, it, you know, if you, if you put the question to me, uh, who, who's been my favorite? Uh, Christian Bale. So you know, I, I agree. Okay. I'm, I'm the- so that's that's a good start. So good Christian start. Bale. Um, next, we've got another tweet. It's from Watch Mojo. Watch Mojo, very very big site. Um, hashtag lose an argument in three words. Best Batman Clooney. Oh, burn. Now, wow. <laughs> there's a picture of Clooney here. Clooney had a very strong chin as well. Very strong chin, actually. But, like, Paul, my husband Paul, pointed this out to me when we were watching this quite a while ago. Maybe it's like been a couple of years since I've seen that Batman, the Clooney Batman. And Paul was like, you would totally know that that was Clooney if he turned up as Batman. It's so Clooney. Clooney's got such a strong bottom half of his face. Like, you totally know that that's him. Well, I mean, when you first saw that when you were younger... And, you know, you you were younger, you, you'd read less comics at that point and everything. What did you mm-hmm. think about the Clooney Batman? Did you enjoy it? Uh, mm, enjoy is a strong <laughs> word. I mean, uh, I did see it in the cinema. Like, you know, I think I just thought it was really ridiculous. Like, you know, because, I mean, what, what year would that have been? That would have been, like, early 90s, right? I think, I think mid to late 90s, I reckon. I mean, it's around about a mid 90s vibe. So yeah. we were. T- I don't think I knew what to make of it. Um, you know, I think it, they're. They, I mean, you know, those movies are what they are. They're like super campy and you know just ridiculous. So like you know the bat suits being ridiculous worked just fine within the context of those movies. Yeah, it was like Joel, like a sort of Joel Schumacher like fever dream. And we all know that Joel Schumacher did the Lost Boys, didn't he? So yeah. I kind of feel like oh, I mean he. he oh, yeah, I mean, one of my favorite movies is Lost Boys, you know. So. He'll always be sacred because of Lost Boys, but oh, mate, Joel, God. Right, we've got one last tweet here. Oh, here we go. All I'm going to say is Ben Affleck is still the best looking Batman. Look at the man's chin. <laughs> so just on the basis of his chin. That is a very strong, I mean, he does have a very strong chin. That, that bum chin is magnificent. It is. It is. Again, a very identifiable chin. Um, very. I would agree very i actually think that you should have a sort of i think the bottom half of your face should be non-identifiable like you should have really thin lips and like no chin <laughs> like that's what i'm mm-hmm. thinking like because kilmer had that's in though it is a good bat chin i have to say it's a very good bat chin i think he looked like a good batman like and this is yeah. the thing like you know i i was talking to my husband paul about batman and stuff and how we were going to talk about this on the podcast and Paul was like, right, so Paul and I don't like those movies, you know, the ones with Batfleck, okay? But we both agree he looked amazing. Ben Affleck is a good actor. He looked incredible. I love the suit. I love the vibe. The training scenes and stuff as Bruce Wayne. I mean, the, that atmosphere and that feeling was really, really great. But the films were terrible. They were really, really bad. And therefore, you're only as good as the director, you know? And I feel that... Ben Affleck was like he was shopping in a performance at some points, you know, he wasn't giving it, you know, and I think if he'd really given it, I would have loved to have seen it, but I'm, I'm over it. And what about you, Liz? Do you think it would have been amazing if he'd gone on to do it? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think yeah, like you said, I feel like, you know, by the time Justice League came out, he was phoning it in, like, really visibly. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and I, yeah, I kind of feel, I, I feel bad, uh, for him because I know he had this like you know huge enthusiasm to play Batman and be Batman and everything and then like you know the the response to the films was really mixed and a lot of people didn't like it and um you know I I feel the same way you felt about those movies I didn't I didn't think you know it was a good take on Batman um really uh with with the ultra violence and everything that didn't work for me mm-hmm. for a lot of reasons mm-hmm. um but like you said i think i think he looked awesome i think the suit was really cool i mean when we were talking about the bat suit you know earlier in the episode um i think the reveal of his costume was really awesome like you know when uh when they like teased you with the image of him and next to the batmobile it was like yeah that is a great suit it is yeah uh, so uh, yeah, and I, you know, I, I get why people, you know, are kind of still mad about it. Like, mm-hmm. why people who really wanted to see him as Batman and see that reach its full potential are mad that it's not him. So, you know, uh, I get that. 
because I, I do think he's a good actor, and I think he could have been really great. You know, he could have been really great. I just, I honestly think with 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 actors, you know, your your boss is the director. You, you know, at the end of the day, and the director is going to give you the right direction that you need as an actor to fill fulfill that role. Um, and then the script and everything else, you know. And again, like, I think if it was given to... I think if it was given to another director, <laughs> to be honest with you, and um, Batman and Ben Affleck would be absolutely fine. I'd be absolutely happy with that. But if Batman was just given to another director, I'm not a big fan of Snyder. I just am not a big fan of his at all. And what about you? What are your feelings on Snyder just as a director? Take away the Batman thing. Uh, I'm not a huge fan. Like, honestly, like, you know, I think... Uh... I think he can do some really visually interesting stuff like uh you know like you know when I when I watch 300 and things like that it has a really kind of slick quality it's like you know he he actually can do some very visually like impressive stuff but to me that like you know it looks much more like video game or music video or something like that yeah. um as far as actually directing I don't know um how great a storyteller I feel he is but I that- agree that's my take. No, that I agree. I agree. I mean, I, I am not a fan of his, but I adored Three Hundred, and I adored Three Hundred because it looked like the film had just lifted that feeling from the pages, and you know, com- and completely and animated it, you know, and and brought it to life. Um, and I loved. I thought the casting was really good. I mean, Gerard Butler is brilliant. Like, and he's never been that good since for me. I I I, I feel bad. I've met Gerard Butler, and he's a very lovely man. So if you're what if you're listening to Positive Nerd or you watch this, Jared, I love you. I love you. But P.S. I love you is a terrible film. But like I loved Three Hundred. I thought it was great. This is Sparta, and I loved that he didn't have to change his accent. It's like yeah, I'm just gonna do this. I think he's from Paisley or something like that, and which is really not not the, not a great place in Scotland. But like he he's from Paisley, I think, and he went to like Glasgow University and stuff. So I'm like yes, proud Scot, but. I love 300. Uh, since then, what was that other film he did with all the half-naked girls? Can't remember. Oh, um, Sucker Punch. Yeah, like, I watched Sucker Punch. Yeah, I haven't watched Sucker Punch, I have to admit. No, I just, it, uh, for me, Sucker Punch was just like a film, like, take the kind of, the whole scantily clad girls out of it. I don't think they need to be scantily clad, but if, if that's the way he directed it. Um, but the story sucked. It sucked. Like, I didn't think it's it was very good. I haven't watched it. I, you know, I heard, I heard, like, you know, that it was pretty bad um so i didn't bother but not good i mean let's go back to so let's go back to the christopher nolan stuff so i think honestly now i know you're a big fan of these films liz and i didn't hate them but i was i didn't have any feeling towards them i thought they were good but whatever but since what we've seen since i was talking to paul again the other night and he said to me, you know what? Those Nolan films are like Oscar winning performances and they're like Oscar winning in comparison to everything we saw after that. And I think he's right because even the Scarecrow and I think about the world that he was building, it was actually really, really good. So what is it you loved about the Nolan stuff? Like, do you think... Yeah, I, I, I love the Nolan films. Like, uh, particularly like, particularly the first two. I don't think that the third one is like, you know, uh, quite on par with the first two. But I, like, I absolutely adore like... I've watched Batman Begins about a hundred times. Like it's one of those movies that I can just watch over and over and never get sick of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like you said, the Scarecrow. I thought Killian Murphy as the Scarecrow was amazing. Um, I thought Liam Neeson was amazing. Um, obviously Heath Ledger. Like I just think that they're great films. I just love them. Oh, they're absolutely uh, brilliant. Yeah, absolutely, I, you know, especially because at that time you were getting all those like, you know, that kind of. Uh, late 90s, early noughties spate of superhero movies that were like obviously not looked at uh, by, you know, the studios as, you know, anything to take seriously, like the Fantastic Four movie uh, with Jessica Alba and um, the, like the Ben Affleck Daredevil movie. Like, oh God, you know, forget about like, that. Like, all really <laughs> campy, like the Electra movie, Catwoman, like they were coming out like, you know, hard and fast and they were all pretty bad. Yes. Um, and then, you, and like, and the Batman franchise itself, um, you know, was kind of just on its like last legs, like, you know, like death rattle, like after the Joel Schumacher era. Um, <laughs> and it totally like flipped the script. 
I feel. The Nolan films are what really, like, you know, changed the way the studios perceived um, superhero films as something that they could, you know, like, take seriously and audiences would respond to if they, you know, if they treated them with respect. Uh, So I feel like, you know, uh, the whole MCU and, you know, now the DCEU and everything else, like, owes a huge debt to the Nolan films. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think so. Whether you like them or loathe them, I think... It's that way where, I mean, it's a sign of a good director. I mean, I'm not a huge fan. I'm not a whole a, a Nolan uh, fan girl by any means. I think I pick and choose what I like from Nolan. I, I've got some friends who are like, oh my God, Nolan, everything he touches is gold. And I get it, but I, I do kind of feel that it's the sign of a good director. There's just a way that in which he brought the darkness without being dark if you know what i mean he brought a serious script without being oh my god this is a boring drama he brought it and he brought those characters to life you know even catwoman i thought like you know anne hathaway's performance was great i didn't i wasn't sure when i first saw the casting but i was like great and those hints at the end at the very end of the last film and bane and everything the the one thing i would say is the christian bale's voice really irritating let's talk about the bat voice for one second because oh love the bat voice bat voice is something that i've got a picture for those watching live of various batmen up until christian bale we don't have the bat flick thing here so we've got like adam west he didn't change his voice right he was just adam west right so that was what it is michael keaton who i'm going to talk about in a second he he didn't really change his voice either actually didn't no. really change his voice. Neither did Val Kilmer or George Clooney. It was really Christian Bale that started Bat Voice. That that <laughs> it started to get on my nerves and being boom, oh. roar and burn. Like, what was it? <laughs> do, do we have to have a Bat Voice? Do you think it's necessary to have a Bat Voice? Oh, I like you know. I yeah, I love the Bat Voice. I mean, yeah, that. Uh... Uh, I mean, Bane's voice is another thing. Bane's voice is hilarious, but I love it. <laughs> um, but, like, the Bat voice, yeah, I love the Bat voice. I mean, you know, like, Christian Bale's a serious actor. He's like, oh, well, you know, you don't want to sound like Bruce Wayne. Let's put on a Bat voice, you know? Oh, my so, God. Oh, yeah, really lo- and, uh, and, and it's a scary Bat voice, you know? I don't know. It's kind bat. of... It's kind of like, you know, your sad dad trying to scare you into going to sleep or something. <laughs> better go to bed or the boogeyman will come and get you. And you're like, yeah, whatever, dad. I'm actually 21 and this isn't scaring me anymore. But it just, it feels a little bit like, okay, right. It's a bit too much. Yeah. And it, it progresses and it gets more. And you can even see him physically in his ch- his mouth is ch- moving like he's trying to get his bat voice out. It's just like... It's like, it's the, I think it's one of those things where it's like when it's used really sparingly, it's great. Um, but then when he has to have like a full conversation with Commissioner Gordon or something like that, um, then it, it just starts yeah. to sound really silly. But, yeah, having yeah. the odd word like stop or whatever, it's fine. But it's like, so uh, what did you have for dinner tonight, <laughs> Commissioner Gordon? It's yeah. a lovely night to be out catching. You know, imagine just having that conversation with him. It's so like oh so yeah the the voice started to get me and batflick had a little bit of a bat voice as well i guess uh yeah i can't remember like i haven't actually seen those movies enough to remember if he like really employs a bat voice but i imagine he does i think he is it just uh, sort of more lower and husky or something i think most men that play they want to play do bat voice just go husky and growly and like all right. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. Like you know, you if you're gonna try and disguise your voice and be like you know kind of a scary bat, um, you know you're probably gonna go lean into that that husky tone. You know what I just thought? I would love everyone to. So I want people to get really on board with Robert Pattinson, right? And 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 love him. And then I want the first. I want the trailer to come out, and I want them to do the opposite of bat voice, but like. I'm Batman. <laughs> just feel like it really <laughs> go completely <laughs> opposite. Yeah, yeah. Batmite's voice or something. Oh my god, just talk like this the whole time. Because that would throw you off. That would throw you off. I'd be like, who? Well, the- it really would. If you were a criminal <laughs> and Batman started talking to you like that, you would just, you would actually like drop whatever you were doing. You'd just be all confused. Like, uh, it, would. it would actually be a really good disarming tactic. Yeah, it would. It would. And you would never guess. You'd be like, I kind of recognize your weird pointy chin, but this this voice is really putting me yeah, off. Yeah, now I'm just confused. <laughs> now I'm just confused. Let's talk about one of my favorite uh, Batman. 
Um, Michael Keaton. I was almost going to call him Robert Keaton. I'm now confusing them. Michael Keaton. Now, the still that I have, if you're watching along live, is just a full bat suit with the yellow uh, bat symbol, the yellow bell. For me, this was the first time, I think, because the first superhero film I saw was Superman 4, A Quest for Peace, for Christ's sake. So bad. Um, and, but I loved it, you know, and I just thought, wow, superheroes on screen. The next time I saw a superhero on screen was Batman, and it was so different. Tim Burton's Batman, okay, it may, might not have been faithful to blah, 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 but I really liked that first Batman film a lot, and I think it was 1989 it came out. I didn't know what I was watching. I thought Jack Nicholson's performance as the Joker was incredible. Um, I loved this Batman and I've had people arguing with me online about this. And I'm like, it's okay to like this Batman. It's just my opinion. Well, what do you think? Did you love this Batman too, Liz? Uh, I do love that Batman. Um, yes, the 89 Batman suit. I mean, like, I think those films are like so, they look amazing. Like they're so stylized and like, um, you know, everything he's, it's very like Tim Burton putting his mm -hmm. stamp on that world and making it his thing. And uh, Tim, Tim Burton, like, you know, particularly that era of Tim Burton, I love. And, uh, and it's just so like, you know, so dark and, you know, like just visually like, uh, interesting, uh, you know, the look of that film, uh, he, you know, this bat suit fits in perfectly there. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just love that world he created in the first one. I, I, I don't even mind the second one. Of course, it went a bit ski with, you know, you had like mm -hmm. the penguin was an actual penguin guy. <laughs> it's like Catwoman is some kind of reanimated cat zombie lady, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but I, I mean, I went to the Bat Museum at Warner Brothers Studios. It was like a couple of years ago. No, it was about five, six years ago. I think they were celebrating some sort of anniversary then. And we had the Catwoman suit was on display in a case. And my God, she was a tiny person. It, that looked like a sore bloody outfit to wear. I'd be holding in my pee all day long wearing that suit. Like, there's no way you're getting out of that. But I love up close, regardless of what iteration of Batman you like, you see the detail in every single suit and every single thing. My I, like, God. The costume design for those films was amazing, I thought. Like, you know, so, so great. So uh, incredible. Uh, the story wasn't great, but I still, you know, I enjoy the films. Um, let's, let's talk again about... Uh, George Clooney's Batman. I've got a gif up where he's turning around and you've got you've got an arse under your face right now, chest and arse under your face. Um, that whole scene <laughs> when they're getting ready and you've even got bat boobs at one point because you've got Barbara Gordon. Okay. Like, oh my God. Like, seriously ridiculous. And I'm going to say this, like, again, I said it earlier, if anybody moans about the bat suit, just yeah. remember... Bat arse and bat nips. Fuck yeah, me. exactly. Like, you know, things could be much worse for you right now. Is there anything uh, redeemable about that film at all, though, do you think, Liz? Anything redeemable at all? Um, I mean, I honestly, like, you know, I think that, uh, like, there's a lot of, like, just, like, campy, like, you know, sort of uh, comedy value to be had in rewatching those films. Like, you know, just a, a sort of like, yeah, they're really bad, but like, you know, there's just something enjoyable about watching them. I think um, because like, you know, it, like retrospectively, like, you know, it's kind of fine that they are what they are like. And now you've got these really serious, cool Batman movies that, you know, you can watch. Um, and you know and and you have that option but you also can can go back and like you know have a laugh at these i think maybe at the time when they were coming out i wouldn't have had so much of a sense of humor about it if i was you know like a hardcore batman fan yes at that time yes um, i probably would have been you know pretty mad about it but uh but just because of the way like you know uh, the cookie crumbled for me like you know i i didn't have to worry about that so much um and I can just enjoy them for their campy ridiculousness. I am so so I've got the bat nips up again, Liz. I'm very sorry, but you you just look so oh, you. you look so fetching in that suit. <laughs> Yeah, I and, think I, you know, I speak with more authority like this. <laughs> Whenever Liz has done a serious chat during the pod, I'm like, I need to get the bat nips up. I just have to have these right now. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this right for all the Snyder Cut people out there. I want to start, and I said this on stream the other night, 
I want to start an alternative movement. Hashtag free the bat nips. Guys, if we put nipples on the new bat suit and we have at least two minutes of extra nipple footage on that bat suit, it is going to considerably change the whole film. I am telling you, it will change your world. Liz, are you up for some bat nips? Uh, yes, hashtag bat nips. <laughs> yes, let's start this. Hashtag free the bat nips. I'm into uh, yeah. it. I'm into it. I'm very, very into it. Very into it. Um, I wanted to ask you a question, Liz, as well, but about, about the bat people, but the bat people, but the b- b- bad people. Um, if you could bring one actor back to play Batman, aside from Affleck, who would it be? Because I actually saw a news story not so long ago. It was a, a, wee, a little petition um, for people to sign to get Keaton back to play an old, old, old Batman, like to just play a scraggly old Batman. <laughs> Yeah, old man Batman, like, uh, like, like for you know, like a Batman Beyond type situation. Yeah, uh, yeah, that would be very cool. That would yeah. be really, really cool. So I was thinking, like, I would be quite up for like having, like, maybe Keaton come back. But what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it would be Keaton. It would definitely be Keaton. I mean, which he like kind of, sort of did in like Birdman, like you know. Uh, that that was kind of a take on his like old washed up Batman, but um, uh, yes, like if they if they did do like a Batman Beyond film or some you know like some future set thing like you know um, like Dark Knight Returns, which they were kind of trying to riff on with uh, with Batfleck, but I don't think they quite succeeded. Mm. Like they didn't really get there in the end, but um, but yeah, there are stories with like you know like an elderly Bruce Wayne. Uh, you know, having to sort of train a mentor, or, you know, uh, uh, be a mentor uh, to an up-and-coming younger Batman. Uh, yes, I think it would be really cool to see Keaton come back. I think people would love that. I would. Um, I would love to see Keaton come back. Um, I I would be very up for Keaton. I think out of all the Batman that we can see here on the screen i mean obviously r.i.p adam west he's not with us anymore we we can't possibly choose bale uh sorry we can't possibly choose kilmer i mean kilmer's out now um because he's had health issues and things and i would not want to see george clooney back at all um i mean bale i would give it a couple of years but i think the only one that would be reasonable would be keaton but can we solve ca- have, have we solved this liz who's the best batman or is there a best batman like what? What are we thinking? Um, I don't. I don't think there's really a correct answer. I think it's a matter of personal taste. Uh, and you know, my best Batman is not your best Batman, correct? Mm-hmm, absolutely. Don't have a reason for feeling that way, and you know, uh, neither answer is right or wrong. Exactly. I don't think it's right or wrong. If the thing is, is I think it's who you've grown up with as well, um, and also the comics that you've grown up with as well. So there might be some kids out there that go, right, Bale is the best because they grew up with that. Or they might go, no, Clooney, because, you know, when I was little, I went to see the Clooney film and it was just so funny. I've never met anyone that said that, but still. But I just think it's your personal opinion. It's what you're brought up with. And I'm going to say this to people, to the Positive Nerd uh, listeners online right now. If you see someone posting about uh, Batman and you disagree with them open up the dialogue don't tell them they're wrong it's like saying i don't like pineapple and pizza you're wrong i do you know it's just personal taste ah so there is no best batman is that what we're saying are they all i think that's what we're going with yeah Yeah, there is no best batman there you go we've solved it (laughs) we've solved it yes i'm happy with that um liz Tell us about Comic Corner now next week because you've got three options. Now, guys, you can always read along with us in Comic Corner, right? So, Liz, go for it. What uh, are we yeah, thinking? We would love it if you did. Um, and uh, this week, um, I want to put it to a poll because um, you guys were really helpful last week in helping us decide which comic to read. Um, and this week, uh, I thought there were a couple of good options. Um, 
that, you know, I, I'd like to hear other people's opinions uh, on which one they think is best. Uh, so would you like me to break them down for you? Yes, please break them down. So here are our Liz's top three choices for Comic Corner next week. Um, we will be putting out a poll on their jabber pretty much after the live podcast has ended. And what the poll's going to run for a couple of days, right? Yeah. Okay, so okay. let's break it down. What are your three comics for next week that people can vote for? Uh, okay, um, just the way things uh, sort of have shaken out this week, it turns out that they're all DC books, um, yeah. but that's okay. Um, uh, the books I'm choosing are Batman number 89. Um, the reason I'm choosing that is because it is meant to introduce um, first appearance of a character called Punchline. Oh. Um, who is the Joker's new girlfriend. Oh. Uh, and Punchline? So, <laughs> yeah, after after Harley sort of kicked him to the curb, like you know, a while ago, uh, they're they're now introducing a new um, Joker girlfriend. Okay, uh, you know, and uh, the look of the character, the character design is actually really really cool. And this is a book that people are making a huge fuss about. Like, you might even have trouble finding it in your local comic shop. A lot of local comic shops are limiting it to one copy per customer, and you know, it may be that you if you don't get into your shop soon it might be sold out um, i'm not so, feeling the name i'm not feeling the name punchline punchline i, mm -hmm. I mean joker punchline i don't know i don't um, know i think we can, I, I like harlequin you know if that's a great yeah. character and a great name punchline's a bit obvious do I you mean, know what i mean it just, like it is weird though it's like really like you know you're giving the joker another girlfriend does the joker like yeah, I, I always thought it was a weird thing for the Joker to have a girlfriend anyway. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's not like the most sort of, he's not a catch, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But hey, you know, girls like bad boys, I guess. So, <laughs> hey, um, Liz, he doesn't have a metal arm or else I know you'd be all over the Joker. Yeah, that's so, true. all yeah, over the Joker. Know. So that's, that exactly. sounds interesting. I'm intrigued by Punchline, mm -hmm. although I'm not, I'm not liking the name. Then we've got the second one. What is the second one, Liz? Uh, the second one is uh, Deceased. Uh, Unkillables issue one. It's the mm -hmm. first of a three-part miniseries. Okay. I think this is going to be more for people who read Deceased, um, but I think you'll be able to read it anyway. But uh, Deceased, um, so if you don't know what Deceased is, Deceased uh, it, it like is a recent kind of maxi-series-ish. Um, I can't remember how many issues it ran for. I think it was like six to eight, something like that. But, okay. uh, but it was awesome. That sounds uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, it was like um, DC's version of Marvel Zombies. Oh, which okay. I, I read the original Marvel Zombies. It's like hilarious, but also like really high stakes and really violent and really oh. like full of surprises. Like Deceased blew my mind. Like I was, you know, because you just, uh, you never really know what to expect with that kind of premise. But uh, the guy who writes it, Tom Taylor, is like a great writer. And he's always really good when he does, like, a sort of, like, alt take on the DC universe. Oh, uh, okay. So this is a follow-up to Deceased. But Deceased was really great. Um, so I was just like, oh, Deceased issue one of any kind, yes, please. So uh, And finally, the finally, what's the last one we've got, Liz? What's the last one you're listening? we've got is, uh, it is called Plunge. Um, and it is a Hill House book. Uh, okay. So Hill House is uh, Joe Hill, who wrote Lock and Key, is curating a line of comics at DC, and they're all like horror based. Oh, so it, it's like a, it's going to be a horror issue, um, and uh, Joe Hill's awesome. I don't know if he's actually writing this one, but uh, you know he's curating it, so all the writers are working with him to tell their story. So yeah, so that's exciting too. I've got a feeling people might go for Punchline, but maybe I'll be surprised. So. Guys, if you fancied any of those, you think one in particular sounds really good, um, just after you finish listening to this podcast, if you're listening to this in the first sort of few days of it going out on iTunes, Spotify and YouTube, make sure you follow Nerd Jabber on Twitter, check out the poll, and even if you want to go see the results, and that's what we'll be reading next week. And you can read along with us as well and always tell us what you thought because um, it would be nice to maybe read some tweets about what people thought of the comics themselves so we're happy to sh um, share your tweets as well if you don't mind um, so do read along with us uh, Liz, we're coming to the uh, the very end of the podcast again, I can't believe it it always goes, I'm always like like, oh god, will we have enough to talk about? we always have lots to talk about and I can't believe it's the end of the podcast already, that's it um, so 
Liz, where can we find you online? Uh, you can find me at Liz C. Jordan on Twitter and Instagram. And I am We Claire on Twitter. I'm We Claire here on Instagram. And I'm We Claire here on Twitch. Um, please, please follow me and Liz. Uh, on Twitter, we both talk about nerdy things. We both talk about lots of nerdy things. On Instagram, it's mainly my really boring fitness journey. <laughs> Just me, like, looking really sweaty after the gym. Um, Liz is much more poised and, and lovely on Instagram than I am. Um, so please do follow us and make sure uh, that you check us out. Um, and also make sure that you subscribe to Positive Nerd on iTunes and Spotify or you can watch on YouTube at, at We Claire here. So make sure you subscribe on YouTube as well. And you can download it for free on nerdjabber.com. Liz, it's been absolutely lovely. Have you enjoyed that bat episode? I have so much. So much. I've got all the Batman out of our system now. Next week we can't talk about Batman at all. No Batman chat at all. No Batman. Unless there's some kind of other reveal or it's like the reveal of the Robert Pattinson Batman voice. Hi guys, it's me Batman. I'm going to kill you now. Um, or just beat you up seriously but not use my guns. Um, anyway... <laughs> I'm going to go. We're both going to go. Um, guys, thank you so much for listening. You have been amazing. This has been Positive Nerd. Keep it positive. Keep it nerdy. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.